Hello and welcome to today's brief video demonstration. My name is Aaron and welcome to New Dance World Headquarters. Today's video will be a short demonstration of some ideas to use the accent and delay features on the Korg ER1. This is only a demonstration. I'm not really any kind of expert and you can tell by looking that I'm running on kind of a janky uh, setup here. I'll take one moment to describe the equipment used in today's recording. This narration has been previously recorded so that I can demonstrate while the narration is playing back. We have, of course, the Korg ER1. Also, right below it is the Korg EA1 to add a little more interesting sound to this video. The mixer is a Korg 08. Everything is going into an old DJ mixer, so if you hear some hum, I apologize about that. I've done everything I can to remove the hum but it's just going to be a part of the process for today. I will give a very quick shout out to all my friends out there, including Brandon, who let me uh, borrow his ER1, and uh, everybody out there in the Electribe community, welcome. So, for today's demonstration, I've set up a simple pattern on the ER1 and copied it to multiple pattern files, 50 through 53. Just briefly introduce all of the different sounds so that you can see what I've got going on here. Nothing earth shattering on this pattern. And I've also put in a little bit of the PCM percussion. Okay. What I'm demonstrating here is how to use the accent and the delay to add more variety to a live jamming format. If you're using an external sequencer or a controller, this isn't going to be of much interest. But if you use the internal sequencer in the ER1, here are some of my methods for how to add more variety to your rhythm and uh, give yourself some flexibility when you're jamming live. My first tip is regarding the accent feature. I'm not sure if the intended use of the accent is to increase volume on notes that you wish to emphasize, but I've always used the accent to eliminate notes that I don't want to hear while so, your first step is to obviously record a nice pattern, or a you know, half-ass pattern like this one. Then you're going to want to go to the accent button, press it once, and the notes that you want to have in your sequence all the time are red. Notes that you want to have drop out are not lit up. So I'll give a demonstration of how this is working here. With this, we've created some empty spaces in our pattern that we can then fill with a little bit of delay. Now, the Electribe actually has three kinds of delay built in. When there's no light indicated, you have your simple basic delay pattern, which is good if you want to turn the knobs, because I find it has the most clear sound and uh, fine resolution to it. The motion control delay doesn't have a rhythm sequence to it, therefore you have to tune it by ear. Now, the motion delay itself is good for using for a very short delay that will add a sort of flange or you know, robotic tone to your notes. Or if you extend it to a longer delay, it will have a rhythmic echo feature. 
For motion control recording on the ER1, you can record your knob turnings, and with the motion control, you get to use both the depth and the time. Over the next couple of patterns, I'm going to be demonstrating different ways that I use the accent and the delay to provide different sorts of pre-recorded variations on the original pattern. In the first variation, I've tuned the motion control delay to a long, gradual change. This is followed up by recording the, by copying, I beg your pardon, the same pattern to the next patch and reversing the direction that I turn the motion control delay. This gives a very long sort of flange sound to it. In short, one pattern goes up, and then you switch to the next pattern, and it will go down again, or vice versa. Also on these two patterns, I've recorded different amounts of tempo delay at different rates, and also have changed the uh, accent settings. So as I go through these next few patterns, listen to how the notes drop out, and then the delay fills in the spaces, ideally, that I've left behind. I get going and moving through the different patterns. I'm just going to have a little fun as we wrap things up. I'm going to bring in more of the EA1, bring up and down the two different parts, and then just for a little added funsies, I'm going to add some effects from the mixer. thing we need now is a proper kick, maybe a little extra percussion, so I'm going to reach over to my beloved Quasi MIDI 309, bring in a little bit more thumb, add some background drums, and we've got a fun little thing going on. Thank you all for watching this brief video. I don't really see any reason why you need to share, but if you're interested, go ahead, give it a share, give it a like, love to hear some comments. Sorry about the quality of the audio. Once again, this is Aaron, New Dance World Headquarters, wishing you all very